Uh, thank you very much for introduction and I uh, also would like to say many thanks uh, to organizers uh, for inviting me and for giving the opportunity to, to come to this nice place and to, to present this workshop, uh, experimental results obtained by our team, investigating of the FOF materials by spectroscopic techniques. And here we will focus on our results obtained in the past uh, and also fresh results on the FOF systems, mainly by ARPES. Uh, Uh, but first of all, let me let me acknowledge the main core of my cooperation partners with whom we do this research since many years. And we begin it in a group of Clemens Laubschat uh, in 2003, in close cooperation with Christoph Geibelis and Cornelius Kellner, who produced mainly the all materials for our experiments. And later on, Christine and Sylvia joined the groups, and uh, uh, the rest uh, presently they are working on the on the system, makes uh, mixing high quality crystals for our studies and for the characterization. And also I would let me let me thank the main uh, the PhD students of Clemens group who join us in uh, in different time. And since they already work in different places, for example, Alexander joined Max Fo in Lund, uh, Kurt Kuma is at ESRF and Ala Chik and I at Swiss Life Source. We still keep good uh, good connections and working together on, on this topic. And also would like to appreciate uh, Evgeny Chulkov who is uh, providing us with the DFT calculation in the recent years. Uh, so RPS was already introduced in, uh, in the previous talks by, by Anders, for example, and I just only would like to briefly uh, to demonstrate how RPS experiment looks like. So it is a photon in electron hour techniques. We analyze the kinetic energy distribution of outcome and electrons using this and uh, such kind of analyzer. This is a basically kind of capacitor. Changes the voltages between hemisphere, you may able to get kinetic energy distribution of the photon electrons and using the rather sophisticated lens ham of this machine you are able to analyze the angle distribution and to recalculate using the conservation law of energy and momentum to, to recalculate the binding energy uh, and binding energy and momentum. And this is a basically give you information about the electronic states of your material. We're looking precisely to the Fermi energy region to analyze the highest uh, kinetic energy electrons, which basically are interesting for this all, all systems. So I will be showing the results obtained for rhodium, uh, mainly for rhodium silicide and also for iridium silicide, having a different kind of ray of elements inside. So this, uh, sorry. this is a, a crystal structure of all these materials, this so-called one to two trigonal systems. As you can see, the planes of the array of elements are well, very well separated by, by silicide block from each other. And the chemical uh, bonds in the silicide block are sort of strong in comparison to the bonds between silicon and, and rayos. And therefore, if you cleave your crystal, what is essentially for RPS measurements, Basically, your crystallite has a different kind of termination. So you have a kind of mosaic of different kind of crystallites. And essential point in the beginning to understand what you have at your surface. RPS is a very surface sensitive techniques, and we found for all these materials that each termination has its own electronic structure. And is essentially to separate all electronic, all surface electronic structure from the bulk states. An essential point is also that bulk states are seen differently in different terminations. And in particular, this is important for magnetically ordered systems, like, for example, in europium or gadolinium. So the one of the first and essential point was really to understand what kind of uh, surface terminations we have before analyzing the data. Uh, RPS is extremely simple eating techniques. It was already, already mentioned by Cornelius. For each beam times, we're taking more than 10 crystals from the compound because some of them not cleave, some of them cleave badly with, with the terminations we do not want to have. And uh, uh, the quality of the materials is rather, rather important. I just want to say, to show you for terbium rhodium to silicon to when it moves to the condo regime. This is a basically is a picture of the condo latest, what we how we understand it. And uh, this data was obtained in 2006, and we're able to get some heavy electron bands and also see some crystal field split states, but on the energy range of 50 mV. But unfortunately, at the time, we were not able to detect the all, all four Kramers W, this ground standard pre excited state. And later on, due to much more improved crystal growth quality, what Cornelius just mentioned, due to the flux growth, it's immediately found its reflection on the spectral pattern, which you can see in RPS. We measured basically the same region in a gamma point and could heal really nicely resolve the crystal field split states. And also in a gamma point, could see very nicely how the bands, uh, uh, internal bands start to couple with the 4F states, inducing this hybridization gap, which you basically anticipate for condolated system. And moreover, you can see some tiny gaps, which is induced by hybridization between individual Kramers doublets with initially uh, stems by, by hybridization with, uh, with the internal band. 
here I just want to like to say this is, was in the actually a really long tree between 2006 and 2009 when we came to this uh, to these images for each beam time we took different set of samples prepared in different ways by by Cornelius and finally we are able now to get to analyze this uh, kind of quality materials which actually crystal grows procedure can be attributed to, to, to many system of this uh, family uh, what is also makes life easier for the future. I would like to show uh, maybe you've most of them already see it but to me this is really a good a good looking example demonstrating how the F states are coupled with linear bands. We took a few images as you can see here by, by photomission and then combine them together and uh, create such this kind of animation which give you a good, good view how the states are start to couple. You can see when you come in this band ca come in closer and closer to the Fermi energy it start to hybridize in this N-gamma point region F states reveal band-like behavior pushing above the Fermi energy and apparently the Fermi surface reveals strong F contribution. However, away from the, from the gamma point you can see they reveal monotonic behavior and you may see kind of dual nature of this of F states here. Information from taken from ARPES in particular regarding the crystal field split scheme can be successfully used to analyze, to, to analyze for example, bulk quantity like specific heat and I just would like to show this instructive example in case for interbium iridium to silicon to here you can see the fit of specific heat data taken by neutron uh, by, by energy scheme derived from neutron measurements. And the problem was here that uh, the photon uh, the beam of the neutron beam was around 55 mV and therefore determination of this term around 36 eV, what was claimed, was not fully correct. If you look again to the ARPIS data, you can clearly see there is a, p there is a feature in the 75 mV, which has strong dispersion near the gamma point as well as other states. But if you will look at this, uh, if you put the 75 mV peak here, you can see nice agreement of the, o o of the fit. However, in low temperature, apparently both curves are so show strong deviation. So one may argue that this is a because hybridization phenomena which are rather strong here are not included in this ra rather simplified models. So from the ARPIS, we're also able to derive the iso energy surface and the Fermi surface, which is most was most interesting. And here I just want to show you the Fermi surface taken for ytterbium rhodium to silicon to in temperature 10K. So uh, this orange feature, this is a bulk drive Fermi surface, while the red one, this is a surface state. An intrinsic feature of the large Fermi surface is this open neck in the near the X point, which you may see nicely here. This is a couple of, an a couple of uh, MDC maps taken, taken in this area, and you can see highly dispersed surface state first, this red feature, and also you can see open neck uh, at the X point. Also with ARPIS you may understand how the bulk Fermi surface, uh, large F, F Fermi surface forms. You may see on this cut taken along gamma AB direction and this is a particular feature and this, uh, this is a uh, state which is appears as a Fermi energy to strong hybridization with the waterfall of the valley's band states. It's push of them to the Fermi energy and basically draws you the large Fermi surface. So I need to know that this is a data in a perfect agreement with the calculation performed by Gerhard Zwicknagel, published in 2011. You can see uh, the bulk derived Fermi surface, large Fermi surface for terbium rhodium to silicon too. And if you compare, if you will imagine the projection to 100 plane, you can you can see that we have pretty good agreement. So again, uh, ARPIS also delivers you information about the surface, and this is a surface state which is not seen in this bulk calculation. Uh, we perform temperature measurements of the Fermi surface, looking precisely on the neck region and also on this diagonal, and found that it's rather robust in its line and its in size. We see the large Fermi surface that always uh, remains down to 800 mK and up to 100 K, and temperature much higher than corner temperature. And since the large Fermi surface for the compound down to 800 mK, we believe that it uh, has essential point for interpretation of the phase diagram of a terbium rhodium to silicon, to in particular to interpretation of the of the origin of quantum critical point favoring the possibility of the wave, wave scenario uh, of the quantum critical point. Uh, how, the how the small Fermi surface should look like for this compound was for the first time uh, proposed by Jacques Touquet in 2008, and this is a, a small Fermi surface in comparison to large one. So also give a proof that what we see in ARP is this large Fermi surface, which really remains down to 1K. Uh, Unfortunately, ARPIS is not, uh, at least in our measurements, is not able to give us uh, reliable information in temperature higher than 100K because in this case you have temperature broadens of the crystal field split states and we cannot say reliably what happens in a high temperature. But just recent work published just a few months ago 
uh, by Shen Group, who performed the pump prop measurements. They claim that up to 250K, they see the signature of the FD in direction, so implying that large Fermi surface should remain at least uh, up to this temperature. So therefore, we've been rather puzzling where should be transition from large to small Fermi surface and high temperature, where the terbium behaves like a local moment, like 3 plus. And uh, since uh, ARPIS is not able to, to say so, we uh, first we look how the small Fermi surface should look like. This is a terbium cobalt to silicon to its electronic compound, and you can see the small Fermi surface. So basically, we when we perform the temperature measurements, we thought actually always to see where there will be signature of transition from large to small. But unfortunately, we are with ARPIS, we are not able to, to get it, and therefore we turn to another technique, uh, which is maybe not very often used, but uh, well known. This is a Compton scattering measurements, and which we perform in a spring gate facility. And uh, we spent two, two years for these measurements, actually three time consuming measurements. So we start with the terbium cobalt to silicon to with our reference compound, which shows how the small Fermi surface should look like, and 10K. The Compton data allows us to reconstruct, which allows to get information about electron momentum distribution. It is a truly bulk sensitive technique. We could nicely tease the this donut, uh, donut Fermi surface, which in a good agreement with the ARPIS results. And later on, we turned to a terbium rhodium to silicon to perform the measurements at room temperature at 300 K. So this was very um, uh, environment of the machine gives us a good opportunity to do so. And if you look, if you compare these two images, you can see that in January, uh, they have a good agreement indicating that what we can conclude analyzing this data is that a terbium rhodium to silicon to at room temperature reveals a small Fermi surface. If you will be going to low temperature with a terbium rhodium to silicon to, you will see that again, with the strong changes, and the you see the blown up structure here, the whole leg uh, donut becomes open, and you see some construction near the, near the center of the balloon zone. So from all this data, what we have, we have su suggest that uh, in a terbium rhodium to silicon to the large Fermi surface is seen up from 800 milliK, it remains large, as we believe, up to 250 K, and transition somewhere happens above this temperature. At room temperature, you can so should see already a small Fermi surface. So the next question was, uh, we were always interested in what happens in this anti-interfering phase below 70 milliK, and proposition of made by Christoph was that we can also find the reference compound which can be, which can help us to, to do it experimentally. And suggestion was to, to, to consider europium rhodium to silicon too. In this case, europium is a divalent material. And since so, because uh, when ethereum rhodium to silicon to move in the conda regime, we have strong lo strongly correlated hole in this system, while in europium compound we have weakly correlated hole. Therefore, the number of carriers will be the same in both materials. And therefore, if Luttinger sum rules are correct here, they will find then for European rhodium to silicon, to you anticipate to have a large Fermi surface. First, there are a number of further indications that uh, the IFM structure of the system might be quite similar, uh, might help to understand what happens in ethereum rhodium to silicon to below to 70 milliK. 70 milliK. For instance, for example, to get magnetically saturated state in the system, you need to apply only 0.1 in Tesla, which is a strong difference to, for example, to stable trivalent system with the gadolinium rhodium to silicon to where you need to apply 45 Tesla. So this is basically the strategy of, 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 our, of this idea. So this uh, you have a whole leg band. And in case of non-interaction, you should see the small Fermi surface. But in case of the interaction, terbium rhodium to silicon, the Fermi surface will be large. And it should be exactly the same like in, in European rhodium to silicon. Too. Before the first DFT calculation for the system, we found that pretty good agreement with uh, the results obtained by, by Gertrude for terbium rhodium to silicon. So you can see nicely that the Fermi surface is large, necks are open. And all signatures that Fermi surface in European rhodium to silicon to is large fully confirmed, indicating that this is the first good indication how Luttinger sum rules are, are working in the condolatus materials. So, uh, since propagation vector is also very well known, European rhodium to silicon, which is along 0, 0, 001 direction, uh, when we move to the IFM phase with the band, band folding, and this is a, you will see strong reconstruction uh, of the electron bands, for example, jungle gym will, will fold it to itself and to to hybridize with itself together with the donut, and this would be a signature of strong fragmentation. Uh, what you can see here, appearance of this kind of banana feature and this one more hybridization gap, and also you could see this four ovals feature, which would be a result of the of the uh, of the cutting of the donut uh, of the bottom of the donut. So later on, we perform the photo photo emission measurements, ARPES, on uh, moving into the paramagnetic phase. Uh, the temperature on these measurements was around 40 K, so above the transition. 
And as you can see, if you compare the DFT results and what we may see in APIS, we could see really the large family surface here, the donut remains open. You can also see the signature of the junk algebra and the next sheet of the, next sheet of the family surface here. So therefore, already this suggests that proposition that in Europe, Imerodium to silicon to Fermi surface should be large are fully correct. Here, I just would like to demonstrate a comparison of the width of the neck. As you can see, for Terbium rhodium and for Europium rhodium, you can see that they are just nearly identical. So later on, we have performed the ARPES in antiferromagnetic phase, in magnetically ordered phase, phase and temperature around 10K. And uh, we've been a little bit puzzled because in this case, you can see in here was quite homogeneous band structure, but in this case you can see plenty of, of plenty of splittings. You can also detect the large donut here, but indeed you may see many, many, many bands. Also the surface state in the endpoint becomes splitted. So this all implies that something all related to the magnetic order of the system. Interesting is that bulk calculation do not, do not pro propose any, any splittings of the bulk states. And later on, making a slab calculation, compare the data, we came to the point that bulk states and different terminations are differently when the bulk states are after the, to the, to the European magnetically ordered states due to exchange coupling, they become splitted. And this is a, what you can see nicely in APIS. The surface state also splitted, but for the surface state, the first uh, magnetically ordered European layer, which lies four layers below the silicon surface. So at this point, our research was turned to the surface state, which we believe interesting, exotic, and we try to disentangle this puzzle related to, to the surface state. Uh, again, we will be working already with the four layers of the material. We have a silicon termination, then we have rhodium silicon layer, and then magnetically active europium layer, which lies four layers below the surface. This is the essential part of the system for the surface state. So here you can see the measurements performed at higher temperature and, and parametric phase and antiferromagnetic phase, and the splitting can be nicely detected here. So DFT calculation suggests that the state lives in the four layers of the materials, and it can be it can couple with the with the European moments, and therefore full conditions for exchange coupling are fulfilled. So measurements we are trying to understand the set, uh, splitting sets temperature to understand the crude temperature as a silicon surface. And we found it surprising at very mu at much higher temperatures than order in a bulk. So we found the order of the split around 41k. So when the split of this, the exchange split of the surface state already seen, on its own it's already interesting result because when system full system and paramagnetic state, you have only one single European layer which lies four layers below the surface becomes magnetically ordered. So full system non-magnetic while only one and single layer, which possibly due which becomes uh, magnetic due to coupling with the surface state start to be ordered already in 41k. So seeing these results, we decided to, uh, to turn to gadolinium rhodium to silicon to anticipating that most of this, uh, most of this physics would be much more explicitly seen. So uh, nil temperature of the system 107k, so we have much larger temperature window to explore all related phenomena. First, we perform the DFT calculation, which suggests for, for magnetically ordered state when we have a silicon termination we should see not only magnetic split of the surface state here at the end point but also the vera cone seen in the gamma point should be splitted. So this can be easily verified by photo emission and here you can see the temperature measurements be from, from 120k down to 10k and you can see how the magnetic split of the surface state can be seen in ARPES and together with the Dirac cone I would say this is maybe one of the first example how this uh, cone state feature becomes split due to exchange magnetism to exchange interaction with the top mo with, the, with the magnetically ordered uh, for F layer. Analyzing the, uh, analyzing the temperature dependence of both states, we came to the point that uh, Dirac cones start to be seen at 60K while uh, uh, surface states around 90K. Uh, this was also interesting why it is so. And uh, next experiments we have performed at ASRF doing XMLD measurements. Uh, we decided to use fluorescence, uh, fluorescence detector and total electron yield detector and performing the measurements on gallium m 45 f edge to see what happens at the surface and in the bulk of the system. And fluorescence suggests that already 107k we see the onset of the magnetic order, while the electron yield suggests that magnetic order at the surface happens at much lower temperature, around 90k. And moreover, you can see the both curves here behaves differently. But something happens around 60k when you see strong kin here, and later on both curves demonstrate similar behavior. So, so this already just uh, can be interpreted as uh, these two subsystems as the surface and the bulk becomes tailed to each other and it should be tailed by, of course, by exchange coupling along the C direction and should be some states 
which does it. So what kind of states were still unknown, we're just discussing it. It might be so that uh, the clone feature, which is part of the, of the, maybe of the donut, uh, which is strongly coupled to the other, other bulk bands, maybe, or at least can participate in this, in, in, in this action. So later on, I just would like to see, to show you just our strategies, what we would like to do, uh, looking precisely to the surface, and, uh, and in particular to the surface, uh, I just keep in mind that when we analyze the terbium rhodium to silicon, we have seen that the surface state couples hybridize with the 4F states indicating that at the surface should be two-dimensional condolated system because surface state lives only in four layers of the material. Therefore, for the surface states, coupling could happen only with a single ytterbium layer. Uh, we decided to do story more interesting. We decided to put inside iridium, which would be a source because uh, you have non-symmetric block together with iridium, which induces strong spin orbit coupling. Therefore, rush by spin orbit effect would, be, would participate in this case. So you would be able to combine condo physics and spin orbit related physics. And uh, first you can see the spin orbit coupling really leads immediately to, spi sp to spin polarization, to splitting of all two-dimensional features. Seen here, for example, this alpha band has a very strong splitting, also beta, beta band. So, but what is interesting, you can see that each state, uh, for example, alpha band higher strongly couples with the 4F states near, near, near the Fermi energy, and this could be due to, due to the quantum effect, so they're highly hybrid hybridized. So we are trying to, to see what we can learn about this hybridization performing temperature dependent measurements. Uh, for example, here the measurements was done between 8, 8K and 100K. And we have precisely analyzed the slope of this feature here. And we found that it becomes different from this. You may recalculate the velocity. And this indicates that we can, using the condo effect, we may manipulate with the velocities of this highly highly mobile electrons. For example, when the temperature is high, a turbine behaves like local moment. This, uh, this spin polarized state is freely penetrated in a crystal, but when the temperature is reduced, the velocity is reduced due to hybridization with the four states. Our estimation is the group velocity is reduced by a factor of two. At the same time, if you will precisely look to the neck uh, for iridium compound, you can see that for this system, we could detect with the RP the signature of changes from large to small Fermi surface. You see that still, uh, the neck is remains still open. This transition very, very smooth, but already RP for this compound can see it for rhodium compound we have not seen it it may be also rated with a with a hybridization with the bandwidth so this uh, issue need to be clarified uh, further we decided okay if uh, condo and spin orbit works nice maybe exchange also could be interesting to work with the spin, with spin orbit we turn to the system europium iridium to silicon to which is actually known compound and it will mix valent behavior in a bulk where the valency where the valency is changed from 2.2 at room temperature to 2.8 in low temperature. So it's mixed valent compound, but due to relaxation near the surface area, we found that europium at the surface becomes divalent, becomes magnetic. And we also found the onset of the magnetism around 46K. So if you measure in higher temperature, when the europium divalent europium near the surface is paramagnetic, we see the spin orbit coupling effect drives the spin, spin splitting. But if you go to the low temperature, to 6K, where we have magnetically ordered this europium layer, which is only, sing only, only one single europium layer near the surface becomes divalent, becomes magnetic. You can see very strong asymmetry of the surface state indicating this, uh, this electron sleeves and combined action of both spin orbit uh, coupling with spin orbit field and with exchange magnetic field. So here I just would like to finish my talk and thank you for your attention.